الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد إن نصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Welcome brothers and sisters in the uh, weekly tafsir class and today inshallah I will talk about ayah number 189 189 they ask you O Muhammad about the new moons الأهلة, the crescents طيب. Who asked him? The companions, رضي الله تعالى عنهم, okay, uh, or people generally, maybe Muslims, non-Muslims, okay, because the word was uh, عن الأهلة, okay, it is general. طيب, as I said, maybe the companions, رضي الله تعالى عنهم, or the, or the others. Uh, what is the meaning that was عن الأهلة? Okay, they asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, um, what is the wisdom? behind the uh, moon it starts uh, very small hilal crescent then it gets bigger and bigger the mid of the middle of the month it is full moon then again it uh, goes back to the small one and at the end of the month uh, it disappears i mean we cannot see it so what is the w- wisdom behind that ويسألونك عن الأهلة طيب uh, الله سبحانه وتعالى said after that say they are measurements of time for the people and for الحج pilgrimage يسألونك عن الأهلة قل هي مواقيت للناس والحج uh, if you notice here and we mentioned this point maybe more than one time uh, the the answer was through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They ask you, O Muhammad, about the moon or the new moons. O Muhammad, tell them this and this. When we spoke about the ayah in Siyam, okay, in the in the middle of the ayat of Siyam, the ayah. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my slaves ask you about me, I am near. Okay. So there he did not say, Oh Muhammad, tell them that I am near. Why the scholars say? As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, no need for anyone between me and my slaves. If they need anything from me, they can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately, direct. No need to put any anyone between me and my slaves. The doors are open. But the other questions, يسألونك عن الأهلة, قل. When they ask you, oh Muhammad, tell them. Okay, if they ask about the, the moon, if they ask about the shahr uh, al-haram qital fi fighting in the sacred months, O Muhammad tell them this and this. When they ask you about uh, the, uh, the the period, okay, also this will come inshallah in Surah Al-Baqarah, they ask you what should we, uh, how should we spend money in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to spend money generally. Or Muhammad tell them العفو. طيب. So all these questions, you will find that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "O oh, Muhammad, tell them so and so, this and this." Except the ayah about the du'a. Ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, invoking Allah, it should be direct, without anyone. طيب. يسألونك عن الأهلة. يسألونك عن الأهلة. قل هي مواقيت للناس والحج. صلى are measurements of time for the people and for Hajj, pilgrimage. طيب. And the moon, I, I mean the Arabic months, 
this was common to be used to know the start of the month, the end of the month, the middle of the month. Okay, قُلِهِ مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ It is for people, not only for Muslims. For the Jews, for the Christians, for the Hindu, for, for all people. قُلِهِ مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ وَالْحَجِ Okay, what's the name of مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ وَالْحَجِ People use them to know the time. So, for example, after death, I mean after the death of the husband, the wife should stay in Idda four months and ten days. Four months, it should be four Arabic months. Four Arabic uh, months and ten days. Okay, the time of Hajj depends on the Arabic months. Uh, the time of uh, fasting Ramadan, the same thing, we should know the Arabic months. For the zakah also, for the zakah, it should be the Arabic uh, months also. Um, also, this is one of the one of the points that uh, people um, count the zakah or they put the zakah and يعني, every new year, January. This is wrong. Why? Because with time, it will change. Every three years. It will change one month. Okay, so you have to fix a date and the Arabic uh, according to the Arabic calendar, to the Islamic calendar, the Hijri calendar. Yeah, sorry, it is not Islamic, it is not only for the Muslims, for people according to the moon, not to the sun. And we mentioned before that. The, uh, the Jews and Christians, uh, the Jews and the Mushriks were using that. It was clear from the Quran and Sunnah. From the Quran, this ayah, and from the Sunnah, we mentioned fasting Ashura. The Jews used to fast Ashura. Okay, because they respect Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam. And also the Mushriks during the time of uh, the Makki time, when the Prophet was in Makkah, also they were fasting Ashura. So it means they know or they were following the Arabic uh, calendar, the moon. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ قُلْ هِيَ مَوَاقِيتِ لِلنَّاسِ Then he said, وَالْحَجْ And also this is the time for Hajj. Uh, uh, the, the scholars mention what is the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned only in Hajj. It is time also for fasting and for the zakah. So why specific or sorry, what is the wisdom specifically Hajj mentioned here? Uh, they said because yeah, and subhanallah uh, if you delay if you delay zakah, for example your zakah in Muharram, you forgot. Okay, so you have to pay the zakat in um, uh, the next month, Safar, for example, or Rabi' al Awwal, in Shawal, when you remember, you, you, you have to pay the zakat. Fasting Ramadan, if you miss fasting Ramadan because, because of a disease, because you were traveling in Ramadan, خلاص, you can make up the days after Ramadan. But if you miss the Hajj, Okay, yeah, and for example, um, there was a delay and you couldn't reach Arafah on time. خلص. You cannot make it. You have, to wait, you have to wait next year and you do Hajj from the beginning. Okay, you don't continue this Hajj, you have to do a new Hajj. And that Hajj, not valid. Why? Because the Prophet said, الحج عرفة الحج عرفة الحج is عرفة it means the main pillar is عرفة if you miss عرفة خلاص you cannot do حج your حج is not valid if you miss the طواف no problem you can do the طواف later yeah, for example if the woman during the period uh, she has the period okay when she become when the period stops she can do the طواف she can do the سعي Okay, if she, uh, if the person cannot do stoning, okay, someone can do it f for him according to rules, or they should uh, slaughter a sheep or to fast or to feed. 
طيب but the problem the, the main thing is عرفه if you miss عرفه you miss the حج so this is والله أعلم uh, why or the wisdom behind mentioning الحج يسألونك عن الأهلة قل هي مواقيت للناس والحج then Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, said uh, or sorry before before that also there are ayat other ayat in the Quran Surah Al-Isra Surah Yunus Allah, uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى هو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء والقمر نورا وقدره منازل لتعلم عدد السنين والحساب Allah سبحانه وتعالى made the, the sun نورا ضياء والقمر نورا the sun ضياء the moon نور okay what is the difference ضياء means light with heat what is the benefit of sun it is not only light for us also heat the solar the solar energy the moon it is only light can we use the, the, the uh, can the moon gives us heat no because the moon takes the light from the sun according to what they, to what they say then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَقَدَّرَهُ منازل. Allah made the moon okay, منازل, stages one stage is crescent one stage is half moon one stage full moon why? لِتَعْلَمُ عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ to know the years and also to count what is the way to count? Okay, the moon And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in, uh, this is in Surah Yunus. In Surah Al-Isra, فَمَحَوْنَ آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ وَجَعَلْنَ آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْصِرَةِ لِتَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ Okay, the day and, and, uh, the day and uh, night, okay, this is to know the years and to count. So we should, uh, brothers and sisters, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتِ الْأُولِ الْأَلْبَابِ And this creation, the, the night, the day, uh, the heavens, the earth, and also the sun, the moon, the stages of the moon. Okay? This should be a clear sign of, of, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean... To indicate the existence of Allah subhanahu, to indicate the, the, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the Muslims, for the believers, if you think, if you reflect, if you go deeply in, into the movement of these things, this will make you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ بِأَنْ تَأْتُوا الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا And it is not righteousness to enter houses from the back. What is this? The hadith, Bara رضي الله تعالى عن, hadith Bukhari. He said, in the jahiliya, in the pre-Islamic era, they used to enter the house from the back if they are in a state of ihram. I am in a state of ihram, then I don't enter the house from the door. I should go from the back. Okay, what is this from where? They don't have any proof from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. They don't have any proof from Musa, from Isa, from Quran, from any other book. Tayyib and uh, they mention the exception of al Hums. Okay, yani subhanallah, they have rules not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They put their own rules. And this is, of course, not allowed to put rules that this is haram and this is wajib. This is allowed, this is not allowed. This is mandatory, this is forbidden. Why? No, it is like this. From my father. And from, from where your father got this rule? From the grandfather. 
خلاص they do a meetings and they set the rules for people this is not allowed okay for dunya it's okay we do uh, meetings for rules and yeah, for example how to to control uh, covid-19 for the traffic for the medicine it's okay about dunya but for the akhirah i mean for, to say this is halal and this is haram okay so they say the exception is al-humus what is your humus al-humus uh, as a linguistic mean means that al-mutashaddid fi al-din the one who is very strict in religion any any, any religion okay so they are called al-humus but when we mention al-humus it means the qurashi people طيب يعني or the tribe of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. so the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم considered as they consider him as the Hums, one of the Hums. okay. يعني if you remember that uh, when they do tawaf in the Jahiliya, they go around the Kaaba naked. they tell people if you want to enter the Kaaba for tawaf You have to remove all of your clothes. Why? خلاص. No. Your clothes dirty, full of sins. So you should go pure. Uh, you should go uh, clean without any clothes. Naked. And subhanallah, uh, they don't feel shy, fully shy. But there is maybe one percent of shyness, or two percent. They 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 used to do the tawaf men in the morning, women at night. Subhanallah, the, the women go around the Kaaba. They do the tawaf naked, and the woman says, "اليوم يبدو كله أو بعضه فما بدا منه فلا أحله." Subhanallah, Subhanallah. الحمد لله على نعمة الهداية. All praise to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. that he guided us to Islam. This is wallahi the, uh, the biggest ni'mah, the most important ni'mah, the Islam, guidance. The woman says, now or today, اليوم يبدو كله أو بعضه. She means the private part, it will be exposed, all of it, or part of it. But what is exposed, it doesn't mean that I am ready for the haram. I'm doing this for, I'm, I'm telling people, uh, telling the men, the men, come, I'm ready for the haram. No, I'm doing that as a ritual deed, as a ibadah. Of course, this is bid'ah. But if you are from Quraysh, you can use your clothes. And if you are not from Quraysh, you should go around the Kaaba naked, or you can hire clothes from Quraysh. So the same thing here. Okay, if you are in the state of ihram, it is not allowed to enter your house from the door. You have to go from the back. But if you are from al Hums, you can enter from the door. Subhanallah. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. And it is not righteousness to enter houses from the back. What is the relationship between entering from the door or entering from the back? Uh, it, that it is uh, a kind of uh, worship. It is not a sign of righteousness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنِ اتَّقَى وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنِ اتَّقَى But righteousness is in one who fears Allah. Righteousness is not you enter the house from the back. Righteousness, if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you follow his orders. You avoid the not allowed things. This is the righteousness. Okay, so Allah wants to correct the concepts. Allah wants to correct the misconceptions. And also now, subhanallah, Who is the good person? The good person uh, uh, who has a uh, good job, good salary, 
looks nice. Okay, what about his salah? What about his uh, ibadah? His fasting? Subhanallah. Righteousness should be uh, yani evaluated according to your deeds, your actions. Allah, in, uh, the Prophet said, Hadith in Sahih Muslim, Inna Allah la yanduru ila suwarikum wa la ila amwalikum wa lakin yanduru ila qulubikum wa amalikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at your appearance or your money, your wealth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at your hearts and your deeds. Okay? Also, uh, for example, if you are uh, the mudir, the manager of a company, and at the end of the year, like this month or next month, Okay, usually the companies in at the end of the month or maybe in the new year they evaluate the uh, the employees. Okay, this evaluation should be according to their deeds, their their efforts, not because wallahi he, he looks nice, wallahi he is a funny uh, employee, wallahi he, uh, he brings the breakfast for us every day. No. You should evaluate this employee according to his uh, performance at work. Wallah, he's doing his job sincerely. He comes to the uh, to, uh, he comes to the company early. He le- he comes online. He leaves uh, on time, and he leaves on time. طيب, so this is the, the real righteousness. ولكن البر من التقى. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala said. وَأْتُوا الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ أَبْوَابِهِ And enter houses from their doors. Okay, you are in a state of ihram. Okay, there is no problem. You enter from the door. No need to go from the back. And some scholars mention that you can take this as a general concept in your life. وَأْتُوا الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ أَبْوَابِهَا يعني For example, you are interested to to marry a girl. Okay, wallahi, uh, there is one girl. Uh, um, maybe she, she, uh, yani she's with you at work, or uh, she's uh, a da'iya, and that she's teaching your wife, and she's teaching your daughters. Okay, so... Uh, uh, or your sister, so you like to to marry this this lady. Okay, so don't try to uh, chat with this lady without the knowing of her parents, and you try to meet this lady, يعني alone in a restaurant or um, in uh, hidden places. Okay. If you if you like to do the halal, if you if you like to do something lawful, knock the door and speak to the father. This is the correct way. Don't do it in the wrong way. So you can take this as a general rule. If you want to do something, don't do it in the wrong way. Do it step by step. Okay, yani, subhanallah, many people don't like to follow the, st- the, the, the rules. They like to jump. Yani, for example, what is the rule to get a license, a driving license? Wallahi, the rule to get a driving license, the first thing you should go to the, uh, the Ministry of Interior and you get a card that y- you like to, uh, to get training. Then you go to a company to train you how to drive the car after you uh, you finish the training you go and you do the test and when you pass the test okay they will ask you theoretical questions and then there will be after that there will be a practical uh, test you drive the car and the policeman with, with you to check your driving skills then after that if you pass the exam you can get the card I mean the license uh, the license card. Some people know they don't like to follow the rules. 
yeah, for example, they want to skip, they try to find wasta. They try to find anyone to, to, uh, to help them to skip the, uh, the, the theoretical part. Okay, follow the rules. Well, I want to do the test without, uh, without training. Go and do the training. What is the problem? Follow the rules. Okay? وَأْتُوا الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ أَبْوَابِهَا Then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And fear Allah that you may succeed. So what is the way to succeed? Is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to cheat. يعني Now uh, we notice many people say Allah, now, makufaida, if you fear Allah. If you follow the rules, you will lose. If you work straight, people don't like the one who is, who is serious, who is straight. They like the one who is cheating. Okay? The rule in Islam, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ How can we get the success if we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا The one who fears Allah, Allah will open the doors for him. Allah will give him something from not expected door. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Allah will give you the provision from unexpected source. طيب, يعني, uh, some people say, Wallahi, brother, friend, my friend, nowadays, you have to do the haram. Without the haram, you cannot live. Without the haram, you cannot live. Some people, their concept in life like this. And of course, this is totally wrong. Because this is opposite of the Quran. In the Quran, Allah says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ The one who fears Allah, Allah will... Find an exit from any calamity, from any problem for him. Trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, يعني, some, some people, يعني, this is, I know this is يعني, sometimes not easy. This is dunya, brothers, sisters. This is dunya. We struggle. There are many challenges. Not everything is easy. Okay, you yeah, have, يعني, uh, we have to compromise something in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani maybe uh, if you are in a place, in a country, okay, that the beard, yani because of your beard, difficult to find a job. Not only in non-Muslim countries, okay, even here in Kuwait. In some places, okay, uh, yani I remember when one of the brothers apply. Uh, to work in a, a school, they t- I think in a school they told him, yeah, and everything is good with you, except your beard. If you shave your beard, you can't work with us. Subhanallah. Taib. So this is, uh, of course, a test for him, for this brother. Okay. Or sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, also I remember one of the sisters, uh, not here in Kuwait. Uh, I don't know which country, um, in Turkey or France, okay. Uh, she, she applied for a job, okay. She's okay. With that, they are okay with her to work, but they said you have to remove your hijab. You have you have to remove your hijab. طيب. So. Subhanallah, some people fail the exam. Yeah, some people from the beginning. Okay, I have to remove the hijab. Okay, astaghfirullah, and she removes the hijab. I have to remove the niqab. Okay, I remove the niqab. I have to shave the, the beard. Okay, I will shave the beard. Yeah, yani some of the brothers or sisters, even they don't negotiate with them. Okay, they don't try to find another job. Wallahi khalas, this is the situation. 
in dunya now we have to do some haram to live طيب يعني is it يعني really necessary is it ضرورة or just this is from the shaytan يعني for example tell them والله if you need this job okay and difficult to find them tell them okay uh, let me to keep the beard okay and uh, cut and yeah, for example 100 from the salary if the salary for example 1000 okay give me 900 maybe they accept maybe they accept go to another job try once try twice yani uh, yani brothers sisters of course i'm speaking generally Maybe in uh, some situations it is very difficult. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Okay, sometimes sometimes the person is forced to do something. Maybe he, he is forced to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? He has the excuse if his heart is full of iman. طيب إلا ما نكره وقلبه مطمئن بالإيمان طيب so uh, back to the this ayah brothers uh, sisters the concept the correct concept the only correct concept is ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون fear Allah you may succeed okay and we have to teach our children this concept okay oh son oh daughter if you fear Allah, Allah will open the doors for you. The lawful doors for you. Don't think, uh, don't make your view on very narrow to the haram. Okay, Allah will open the door. Don't say how. Allah knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ya'lam wa antu la ta'lamun. Allah knows and we don't know. Sometimes the shaitan comes to us, how? How can you do this without without committing the haram. This is not our job. This is this is can be done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need only the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ That you may succeed. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Fight in the way of Allah. Those who fight you, but don't commit aggression. Indeed, Allah doesn't like aggressors. This ayah gives the permission or an order for the believers to fight the kuffar who fight them. You know, in Mecca, when the Prophet ﷺ was in Mecca for 13 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him the permission to fight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, Yalla, tell your friends, tell the companions, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, Yalla. Prepare an army and fight Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and Ubay ibn Khalaf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give the permission to fight. Then when they went to Medina, sorry, when, when they migrated to Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the permission. Udina lilladina yuqatalu. Udina. The permission was given. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fight. Yani this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Fight in the way of Allah. And here, an important and critical point. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Fight in the way of Allah. What is the meaning of that? To raise La ilaha illallah. You fight sincerely for the cause of, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
يا رسول الله الرجل يقاتل حميه الرجل يقاتل رياء ذيك اصل بروف صلى الله عليه وسلم او رسول الله ذا مان فايتس حميه فور هيز ترايب او ذا مان فايتس فور جاست تو شو ذات هي از بريف هي از سترونج هي ونتس تو شو بيبل هيز سكيلز ان فايتنج or for this or for that which one fi sabilillah which one considered in the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way of allah he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man qatala litakun kalimatullahi al-uliya huwa fi sabilillah the one who fights to make the word of allah superior this is fi sabilillah So anyone who's, who's fighting or thinking to fight he should bear in mind or he should ask himself why I am fighting or why I'm thinking to fight I'm thinking to fight just to show or to support my tribe or my country or it is in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the main thing a man uh, was fighting with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam jihad so you know after the jihad there is booty and the amir i mean the leader of the army of course it was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to dispute the booty So this man said, what is this? Said, this is your, your part, your portion. He said, no, Rasulullah, I'm fighting with you, waiting for an uh, arrow or a spear to enter from here and to exit from here. It means Rasulullah, I'm not fighting for money. I'm fighting to kill the enemy or that the enemy kills me to be shaheed. Subhanallah, then when the uh, second stage or in, uh, next uh, battle, this happened. Subhanallah, they found him and the f- battlefield was killed and he was shaheed that the arrow enters from here and it exits from the other side. This is the, the real intention for fighting in uh, another battle the uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged the companions you know they need encouragement because they may lose their souls they may lose their money their families so he encouraged them qawu ila jannatin ardha as-samawat al-ard The Prophet Sallallahu told the companions, let's go, stand up and hurry to a paradise. Ardu has samawat wal ard. It is big like the heavens and the earth. One of the companions, his name, Umair ibn al-Humam. He has uh, some dates with him. Then he started to eat maybe two, three, four pieces of dates. Then he started to eat them. Bismillah. Then he was thinking. And he had a He said, he was thinking that if I wait until I finish these dates it means uh, it is a very long time between me and paradise between me and the the death in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he threw he spit the dates from his mouth and he went inside the battlefield and he was killed as a shaheed in that battle this is the real intention 
Okay? And uh, this is not only for fighting in the cause of Allah, uh, yani, I mean in jihad. All your deeds should be sincere. Why you are teaching people the Quran? Why you are teaching people the, the sunnah, the fiqh, the seerah? Why you are making da'wah? Why you want to establish a, an Islamic center? To earn money? To be famous? Allah knows your intention. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the, the, the believers, the companions, and also all the believers, fight in the way of Allah. Those who fight you. So now, it is not like before, not like Mecca. Okay, in Mecca, the kuffar were beating you, killing you, okay, abusing you. So, you have to be patient. But now, in Medina, you have a country, you have an army, you have power. So, anyone is fighting you, you go and fight him. Don't keep silent. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ and also it was a mission for the, the, the Muslims, the companions that time, to fight the kuffar who were in Mecca. Why? Because they started fighting them. They expelled them from Mecca. So now it is the right for the companions to go back and to fight the kuffar in Mecca. To get back to their homes. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ so the Muslims should not be weak. We have to, to be strong. And the important point here, that uh, the jihad, the concept of jihad, because now many Muslims can say, Mus we as Muslims, we have to make jihad, why we are very weak, Ummah, why? We have to be well prepared for the jihad, according to our ability. I mean what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةِ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ Prepare for them, for your enemy, to fight your enemy. وَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ What you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say prepare, prepare like their power. He said وَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ What you can provide. Because some, يعني, if you notice the battles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll find that all the time or most of the time, the power of the kuffar more than the power of the Muslims. Apparently, يعني. Yeah, for example, Al-Badr, the first one, the first major battle in the second year. The number of the Muslims... 300, about 300. The number of the kuffar, about 1,000. The number was three times the Muslims. And also the Muslims were not prepared to fight. And the kuffar of Quraysh, they were fully prepared to fight with their horses, with their weapons. Okay. And also the others. Yeah, for example, Mu'ta. And Mu'ta, more than 10 times the, the army, the army of the Muslims. Okay, but this is their power. This is their limit in preparing the, the army. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wait until you are well prepared and until you have the same Power, then go and fight them. Oh, he did not tell him that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Anfal, and inshallah we'll come to this, Allah alam, after how many years, طيب, Ya ayuhal nabi, harrid al-mu'minin al-qital, in yakum minkum ishroon sabirun, yaglibu mi'atin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, harrid, encourage, the believers, till the believers 
تو فايت ذا كفار اياكم منكم 20 صابرون يغلبوا 200 اف يو هاف 20 صابرون بيشنت اوكي دي كان ديفيت 200 طيب سو ات از انف ذات اف يو هاف 10% اوف ذا انمي دونت سي والله نو 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 وي ار نوت ريدي فور فايتنج because the number of the uh, the enemy is double uh, our number or it is triple our number we will not fight okay in this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them if you have 10 percent you should fight okay if it is one percent you should not fight yeah for example uh, one thousand and hundred thousand against hundred thousand don't fight But if you are 10%, you should fight. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this rule less. How? Allah said in the next ayah, الآن خفف الله عنكم وعلم أن فيكم ضعفا فإيكم منكم مئة صابرة يغلب مئتين. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الآن خفف الله عنكم. Allah made it less. Allah decreased the number. علم ان فيكم ضعفا الله نوز يور ويكنس فيكم منكم 100 صابره اف يو هاف 100 فايترز سولجرز صابره دي ار بيشنت دي كان ديفيت 200 سو فروم 10 تايمز الله ميد ات اونلي دبل اوكي سو اف اف ذا نمبر اوف ذا مسلمز 50% اوف ذا كفار يعني we are 1000 and they are 2000 then we have to fight but if we are 1000 and they are 3000 then we don't have to fight we can escape طيب so the uh, fight the, I mean the rules the, I mean the jihad has rules the jihad has rules fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu وتعالى like the salah يعني for example if I am not in a state of wudu can I pray? no you cannot pray and if you pray your, your prayer is not valid you have to make wudu then pray if the, the, the adhan did not come okay, can I, I pray dhuhr? Yeah, for example in Kuwait The Dhuhr Adhan after five hours. About five hours or six hours. Can I pray Dhuhr now? No. You have to wait the Adhan. You have to wait the time. Okay. Can you pray without uh, sujood? No. The Salat is not valid because the sujood is one of the pillars of Salah. Without reciting Fatha? No. Because reciting Fatha is one of the pillars of Salah. So like the, like the Salah, the Jihad is like the Salah. If you don't have the ability of fighting the kuffar, okay, then you don't fight. Yani, the scholars mentioned that uh, for um, yani, we need to study the seerah, okay, to know when to fight and when to wait. So for Muslims, if the yani, for the Muslim uh, society, if we are in A state if we are in a position like the position of the Muslims during Mecca time so we don't fight the kuffar are more than us and they are uh, prominent and uh, they have uh, power much much more than the Muslims and they, we have to wait we ha- and not to wait and that's it we have to prepare for that are we preparing for that the, the jihad Yeah, and some people, yeah, some Muslims talk about jihad, 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 jihad. No doubt, jihad is part of Islam. We cannot delete the jihad from the Quran or Sunnah. It is there in the Quran and Sunnah. It is there in the books of fuqh. If you study fuqh, you'll find a full chapter about jihad. We cannot delete that from the Muslim, uh, from the Islamic books. Okay, so it is wrong to say there is no jihad. No, there is jihad. 
But there are rules for the jihad. There are rules for the jihad. We have to know the rules of jihad. Okay? Because if you don't follow the rules of jihad, it will be a, a mischief. It will be a big problem. It will create problems with, uh, and it will not correct the mistakes. It will not help the Muslim Ummah. As we notice in some places, they claim the jihad, then you f- we find the Muslims fighting. I mean infighting in the Muslim groups. I am the leader. No, you are not the leader. They kill him. They find another leader. Then he killed the other. Or they fight one group, second group, third group. Subhanallah. And now everything is clear for us. The several uh, groups of jihad in one country. They claim we are doing the jihad. Okay, where is the jihad? Okay. Uh, yani some of them it uh, appeared for us later. Subhanallah, they are claiming the jihad just to get the money. They get the support from other countries. That's why we have to be very careful okay, uh, about this issue. So Allah says here in this ayah, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَ وَلَا تَعْتَلُوا Fight in the way of Allah, those who fight you but don't commit aggression. وَلَا تَعْتَلُوا What is the meaning وَلَا تَعْتَلُوا Don't transgress. Don't commit aggression. The scholars mention in this ayah uh, for example, don't kill the kids, don't kill women, don't kill a worshiper in the church. If there is a man who's not fighting you, he's kafir, he's a disbeliever. Okay, but he is inside the church. He is inside the, the temple, he is inside his home, worshiping in his way, worshiping his God in his way. We don't kill him. The women, we don't kill them. It is not allowed. Even we don't kill their animals. But يعني, if they are using the animals or if the women is helping them in the jihad, we, we fight also this woman. Okay, يعني, you know, يعني, nowadays many countries in their army there are women. Okay, fighting. Okay, can we say well, no, no, no? I don't kill a woman because she is a woman. It is not allowed to kill the woman. No, if she is fighting us, okay, we also we fight her. Or an old man. Okay, it is not allowed to to kill the old man. But if he is helping them, okay, maybe he's not uh, fighting. He doesn't have a gun with him. Okay? But he is planning for them. He is helping them in planning against the Muslims. Then we kill him. Okay? We, so we don't transgress. We don't kill the women. We don't kill the, uh, the kids. We don't kill the one, who, يعني, uh, the, the injured one. And he's not fighting. We take them as prisoners, but we don't kill them. The Prophet said, Okay, أُغْزُوا بِسْمِ الله فِي سَبِيلِ الله قَاتِلُوا مَنْ كَفَرَ بِاللَّهِ The Prophet ﷺ said, fight in the cause of Allah. Do غزو في سبيل الله. Okay, يعني to call people to Islam. Fight the one who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. And in this hadith he said, لا تغدروا لا تمثلوا لا تقتلوا وليدا. And also لا تغلوا. Okay, some meanings of this hadith, لا تمثلوا. What does it mean لا تمثلوا? يعني after killing the person, okay, no need تمثيل. تمثيل means you, you cut the nose, you cut the, the, the fingers, you cut. خلاص. After, يعني you, find, you found him in the battlefield killed, خلاص. We, buried, we bury him, but we don't cut his body, we don't cut his organs. This is tamthil. 
وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا وَلِيدًا And don't kill a kid. Don't kill children. Okay? So, subhanallah, the, the beauty of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ also found a lady, a woman killed after the battle. Then, the Prophet ﷺ disagree with that. And he said, don't kill the women and the children. What is this? A woman is killed in the field? Okay, she's not fighting. So, there are rules for fighting. Okay, the kuffar. There are etiquettes, like the etiquettes of eating, drinking, uh, talking, also in the fighting. Please, brothers and sisters, we have to learn the fiqh of the jihad. We have to learn the fiqh of Islam. Okay? We need to learn, then we, we can teach people the beauty of Islam. Sometimes we don't know how to defend Islam. Yani, yani, yani for example, for example, you come to an issue uh, of, uh, yani, well, uh, this is considered as a sensitive issue. They consider this as a sensitive issue that Islam do- doesn't respect women. Islam doesn't uh, doesn't give the woman the, uh, the, uh, her, her rights. Okay, and they come to the Muslim countries and they want the Muslim countries to give the woman. The, okay, what are the rights of women? Okay, uh, the, uh, the woman should be equal with man. Okay, of course this is subhanallah, misconception. Okay, yani, to make the, the female equal to the male, it doesn't mean that we are giving the woman the, uh, her rights. Okay, yani like, like uh, the, the marriage. Yani, uh, I'm sure many, Muslim, many non-Muslims, okay, uh, they think that Islam is not fair. Why? The man can marry four women, while the woman can marry only one man. This is not fair. Yeah, people say this is not fair and without thinking. <laughs> and in some countries, it is not allowed, it is not legal to have more than one wife. But it's okay if you have a million of girlfriends. Subhanallah. Where is the fear here? The problem when the Muslims don't know how to show the beauty of Islam to the non-Muslims. Why? Because until now we don't know the beauty of Islam. We don't, we don't know the rules of Islam. That's why we cannot defend Islam. So that's why it is very important to seek the knowledge. That's why it is very important to read the Quran and the explanation of the Quran. Alhamdulillah, many Muslims memorize the Quran, but they don't understand. They memorize the hadith, but they don't understand. Read the Quran and try to understand. Try your best to understand the Quran. Try to, your best to understand the Hadith. Spend time to learn your religion. We spend ma- yani many hours to work. We spend we spend every week more than thirty hours. Subhanallah, every week more than thirty hours to earn the money. This is for our job. I will not say this is haram. We need that. But also, what is more important, we need to spend some time to seek knowledge. Maybe every day I need one hour or two hours to read Quran, to understand Quran, to attend a lecture, to read a book. Not only once a week, Alhamdulillah, I attend Jum'ah Khutbah. Jum'ah Khutbah, it is 15 minutes and it is in Arabic and you cannot understand Arabic. No, you have to work hard to understand the Quran and Sunnah and to know 
the beauty of Islam, then you can convey this message to the non-Muslims. I stop here. Zakim al-Khayyam with the sisters.